This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to recover the vinyl fabric seat cover on this personal watercraft. The vinyl fabric we will use to recover the seat is a four-way stretch vinyl called Allsport from Sailrite. Watch this video, then purchase a few yards of Allsport from Sailrite and do it yourself and save. A full materials list will be shown at the end of this video. Before we get started, Matt Grant from Sailrite is going to detail the steps that we will take to recover this personal watercraft. Here's Matt Grant. I'm Matt Grant with Sailrite and today we're going to show you how to cover or recover uh, your personal watercraft vinyl seat. And you can see in front of me here, we've got a three person uh, vehicle here and the vinyl has started to crack and uh, the plasticizers have left the vinyl which is typically when this starts to happen so it gets brittle and you can see the crazing. Um, when that happens there's very little that you can do to make it look perfect again other than replacing uh, the seating vinyl. Now if we inspect the seats carefully and we, we push on the material you can see this bubbled area and the material I can I can move the material around on the foam. See, see how I can even pinch it here? So this is a very pliable material. Uh, this is an, an all sport uh, type vinyl, which is a, uh, a vinyl that stretches in all directions. Uh, here's a scrap piece of all sport in black and you can see I can take it and I can get a lot of stretch on the material, which means that if I can pull it over a surface and staple it to the underside, I can create a, a nice conformable uh, vinyl covering uh, for this seat and I can accomplish essentially the same thing that we got at the factory level uh, And we'll show you how to add the straps and uh, how to staple it underneath and and a number of other things that will make this look Factory new when we're done uh, But if we come back to the aft seat panel You'll notice I can't move the vinyl around it feels a bit harder in this particular case and basically what we have here is we have a vinyl that has been molded to the foam so it's not a separate fabric it's actually been molded right to the foam assembly and indeed I can prove that by removing the seat and here we've got an area where some staples are missing and if we look under here you can see it's even been pulled away a little bit here but you can see here that the foam is permanently attached to our, our vinyl material, which would mean that it would be impossible really to take this vinyl off without destroying the foam, which we don't want to do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to leave, leave this vinyl in place and we're going to put our all sport vinyl over top of it. But because we've got a dip here where we want it to be nice and tight, we don't want a bubble here uh, like is acceptable here. Um, we're gonna actually do this seat a little bit differently. We're gonna pattern it in pieces and there will be some seams in here so that we can get a, a, a nice tight fit because any of these dips will create areas where we can't necessarily get the material pulled down unless we were to put uh, a, uh, uh, a pull strap. Uh, into this location and pull it through to the bottom, which we don't want in this case because we've, we've got a lot of water here and we don't want any water coming coming through the seating assembly. And you can see, of course, these are all built on a plastic frame, which is what, what this vinyl is stapled to. We're going to cover this particular assembly um, without removing the material. Uh, this particular seat, we're going to actually remove the material, use this material as our pattern, and then we'll put our new material over top of the exposed foam and uh, uh, we can do it that way. So follow along and uh, even if your personal watercraft is slightly different, I think between the two approaches uh, you'll determine which is best for you. We will start by recovering the aft seat. This is the seat that Matt explained to us has the vinyl bonded to the foam so we can't remove the old vinyl without damaging the foam. So Angela places the vinyl wrong side up on top of the seat, then to begin her patterning she will find the center of the seat and mark it on the underside of the fabric at several locations. 
When her patterning is done, she will fold the assembly in half and cut it out, resulting in a mirrored pattern for the opposite side. The goal here is to make separate panels along the contoured shape of the seat, so later on she can sew those panels together, giving the cover some shape right over the contoured sides of the seat. As you watch her, she's trying to feel the seat below to determine where the valley or peak of each of the contoured shapes fall. Then she marks the underside of the all sport four way stretch from Sarite with a marker. Along the underside of the seat, where the vinyl will wrap around the edges to be stapled, she must leave enough vinyl so it can be pulled tightly over the seat and stapled. She's leaving about two to four inches of excess fabric to do this task. Her patterning is now complete. She will next pull up the vinyl slowly and let you see the contoured shape of the seat below so you can judge how yours at home should be done. Since we will be using the Allsport 4-way stretch vinyl from Sarite, we do not need to add seam allowance to each of the seams. So our job is easy as all we have to do is cut the panels out and sew them together matching up the cut edges. If you do not use the Allsport 4-way stretch vinyl from Sarah, you must allow for seam allowance. We will not be showing that here. Strike a line down the center on top of the marks that were made earlier. Then fold the assembly in half along that line carefully and cut along each of the patterning lines, cutting both layers of fabric. Be careful that each layer does not move while you are cutting. After it's all cut out, our personal watercraft aft seat will result in four panels. Yours may be different depending on the shape of the seat. Now, I have... now all we need to do is sew them each together. As discussed earlier, the Allsport 4-way stretch vinyl does not require seam allowance since it can be stretched over the seat for a perfect fit. Here Angela has found the correct corresponding two panels and has laid them so the outside surfaces are facing each other. She will start sewing from the center line that was marked on the fabric. We will sew this first stitch with a 4 mm long straight stitch. This seam will be what is called a semi-flat filled seam. We will not do reverse stitching when we start our stitch as this often shows up too easily when the seat is finished. So instead we will make sure both panels are matched up along the center line and we will start sewing very close to the raw edge of the fabric. Then sew at an angle in until we sew about a half inch away from the raw edges of the fabric. Then when we sew the opposite side of the seat we will do the same procedure and thus sew directly over the end of the first stitch helping to lock the stitch in place without doing reverse stitching in the center of our seat. Sayerite recommends a V92 polyester thread for heavy duty sewing machines or V69 polyester for home sewing machines as this thread is UV resistant. We have skipped showing some of our sewing of the seat, but as you can see, she carefully was matching up the raw edges and tried to keep the stitch consistently about a half inch away from the edge while sewing until she reaches the very corner of the seat panels. At the end, here she can do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Now simply follow that same procedure to finish off the opposite side of the two panels. This time we'll flip the panel around and work from the opposite side. Let's take a look at the center of our seat where the stitches started. Here we did not do any reverse stitching, but our two stitches overlapped each other at the center line. To finish our top stitch of the semi flat seam, we will set our stitch length to about 6 millimeters now. 
The panels must be splayed apart so the under flap, which should be about a half inch, is laying where it will be sewn under while performing our top stitch. We like to place the top stitch always in the lower panel, not the upper panel. Here at the corner of our seat, this is very small and thus a little difficult, but it is possible. Most of this small end will likely be cut off when we get to the stapling job. We want to keep this stitch about an eighth inch away from the first stitch or seamed area. Notice that Angela is pulling gently on the two panels to keep the seam laying flat and open as she sews. The panel to our right is our lower panel of the seat and that's where we want the top stitch to be placed as we discussed earlier. Take your time here and try to sew consistently and accurately as this stitch will always be visible. Also be sure to gently pull the panels apart while you sew. Be careful, this is a stretch final and if you pull too hard it will deform the natural shape of the top stitch. So be consistent while pulling the seam apart and sewing. Remember also, you must sew the half inch flap on the bottom side, so be sure that is happening as you're sewing. Here you can see Angela checking for that with her hand going under the panel to feel for that flap. We're sewing today on the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. The Sarite 111 features a compound walking foot to easily feed this assembly of vinyl through the machine and the MCSCR power system provides excellent slow speed power and control to carefully stitch through even the thickest of vinyl assemblies. These two panels are now sewn together. We are ready to sew the next panel to this assembly in the same manner. We'll set our stitch length to four millimeters to create our first stitch. Match up the panels in the center with the outside surfaces facing each other and start sewing from the center spot just as we did previously. We are going to skip way ahead and now we're ready for the top stitch, which means we will switch from four millimeters to six millimeters in our stitch length. For this top stitch, we will again sew it in our lower panel, not the top panel, and we'll be sure to catch the flap on the bottom side as we stitch. We will skip ahead yet again and show the last of the panels very briefly. The panels are all sewn together and is now ready to be stapled onto the seat. On this, the aft seat, we cannot remove the old vinyl without damaging the foam since it's been bonded to the foam. But before we install the new vinyl over the top, we must first remove any edge or corner protectors, if any. They are typically stapled and glued in place, so we will remove the staples and then pull them off the old vinyl carefully. Since we will be placing new vinyl fabric over the old, we will remove any excess vinyl at this corner which will help ensure the corner protector will still fit over this corner when the new vinyl is finished being installed. We are now ready to install the new cover we just sewed onto the seat. Okay, Brian, I'm gonna get the front stapled first. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold it just like you're doing. And we gotta figure out where the rim is for stapling it right there. Pull it down just a little bit further. The Allsport four-way stretch vinyl does just what the name implies. It stretches to fit the seat. 
So Matt is stretching the vinyl and then will staple it in place. We are using the dual fast electric stapler, which is a very powerful staple gun. However, we found that the small crown had a tendency to sink into the vinyl and thus create a cut. It does get the job done, but we had to be careful to avoid slitting the vinyl, especially where the vinyl was pulled very tight. It is recommended to use a staple gun which can accommodate a larger crown of a half inch. This wider crown will help alleviate this issue. Are we in the Death Valley? Yeah, we're in the valley. As you can see, several helpers makes it easier to stretch the vinyl appropriately over the seat, thus ensuring a proper fit prior to stapling all the sides. I think we need to come this way a little bit, Brian. Shift it toward me. There we go. You still okay over there, Angela? Yeah. Okay, good. You got it held right there then, Brian? Yep. Okay, Angela, let go. Okay, we need to flip it. So, you're probably okay, Chris. Brian, you got your edge held? Yeah, which way are we going? Just over this way. Okay, you just got to get this. Unfortunately, this is the hard part. You just have to get it stretched. I need to see where that edge is though. There we go, see it, okay. Although we use several helpers to stretch the vinyl onto the seat here, it can be done with just one helper no, and a there, few pony it? clamps. When we show the forward seat coming up in this video, okay, you will see that process. Way. Now let's flip this sucker back over again. And let's see if we're centered pretty well. Okay, Angela on that side. At the time of filming, we did not carry a staple gun that would use the half inch wide crown staples. However, now we do, so be sure to check it out on our website. The wider the crown, the less you have to worry about cutting through the vinyl fabric. Sometimes cutting relief slits on the edge will allow the vinyl to take a sharp bend better. Just don't cut too far in so that it goes into the actual cover portion of the seat. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Yep. 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 I pull that up fine. Okay, I think that'll hold that area. Notice that sometimes the staples hit other staples that were used to hold the old cover in place. That's not a big deal. We'll just pull those out and position another staple. All right, so now we're going to get the sides and we'll hold it and flip it. So we're getting our, our seams right along the edges. Make sure that we have tightness everywhere. That looks pretty good, Brian. Can you flip it? See where we are. You're pulled where you want it. That looks pretty good. You got her? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this is all going to get covered by our end caps but so we don't want all this this is just too much so we're gonna cut this out of here I'm gonna just stretch it pull it cut it yeah notice that if the cover takes a sharp bend or turn you can create a pleat on the underside of the vinyl and staple it in place. On outside curves like this, it is necessary to leave a few wrinkles in the vinyl. Obviously the wrinkles are due to the fact that the fabric has to shrink to make the curve here. So distribute the wrinkles evenly while you staple so they are small and less noticeable. right in there. Push 
that flat right there. Okay. There we go. Yep. Ooh. Let's not cut a hole in it <laughs> at this point. Look pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. Looks nice. So let's flip it and see. I think you got them all to the underneath. Yeah, just a little bit of that one, but yeah, I think, I think that, that'll come out when we cut. Okay. 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 Our cover is now secured to the seat. All that is left is to trim away the excess vinyl, check for areas that may need more staples for security, and then to glue and staple our end caps or corner protectors back in place. We're going to use HH66 vinyl cement, but a good contact cement should also work. Be sure to test any and all glues on the vinyl before using. Glues may react differently with vinyl depending on how it was manufactured. Our end protectors were designed to be stapled also on the back side. This concludes the cover for the aft seat. We will briefly show recovering the forward seat in the next chapter. Since the forward seat's vinyl is not bonded to the foam, we can remove the staples, end or corner protectors, and the vinyl itself. However, the passenger handhold strap is riveted in place, and thus we are not going to remove it. We will simply pull the vinyl away from under it, and then push the new vinyl back under it in a later step. This seat has a lot of sharp edges and our all-sport four-way stretch vinyl when stretched tight does not do well with sharp edges. So we will use some scrap vinyl and staple it in place to create shape protection for any yeah. and all sharp edges, especially where they take a sharp turn. One thing we did not cover well in the first video was trying to protect the new vinyl while stapling it in place. You should notice that our table top has some vinyl fabric laid over it to help protect the vinyl being stapled onto the seat. You will continually be turning the seat over and over again while stapling and stretching. So try to protect your project with a soft work surface area. Since we do not have as many helpers here, we will use pony clamps to position the vinyl over the seat. The process is exactly the same as it was when we showed the aft seat in the earlier chapters. I'm going to put just a little bit of tension on the front. Clamp it. Yep. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, now that we have this and this clamped, now we're going to pull and work. Pull and work. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, and that's working everything out through there, I think. Pull. Where you want to start at right up here? By the clamp? Um, yeah, go put a couple between my hands there. You're not flat. There you go. Um, put one in between those. That's you. Okay. Keep, uh, keep them closer. Now we're going to come to this side. And I think what we're probably going to end up doing here Take this clamp off. I'm gonna pull a little harder. roll and see where we're at. And then that. Yeah, we pull the front too. Yep. Okay. I think I'm going to give the back another tug. We don't need these in the room. Uh, no, keep those. Yeah. Because we don't have anything behind them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
now, I think we want to go ahead and do the same thing coming towards the back. Okay, let's, let's roll and see where we're at. Okay. Fine. Oh, yeah, we better stop there. We still gotta go into the strap, don't we? Okay. Doing the gotcha. same same plane. Oh, we can we can roll it. Okay. Same plane as these. Yep. Okay. Kind of connect the dots. Gotcha. Hold on, let me get in there and pull. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna do pretty much the exact same thing here. Playing with this? Yep, kinda connect the dots. Here we need to cut a large relief slit since the vinyl has to take a large inside curve going down. Don't cut too deep or you may cut into the portion that may be exposed on the surface or sides. I know I did come very close to going too far. Okay. Yep. We'll do this side first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes relief slits can help to pull the vinyl around inside curves. Just don't cut too deep. This edge. Sometimes we will fold the vinyl back on top of itself and staple through two layers on the underside. This is an acceptable practice. To make the job easier, we're going to cut away some of the excess fabric here. Then we will push the vinyl cover under the strap that we left in place and cut around the sides so it will lay flat at that area. Oh, that's good. Can, huh? This is the point of no return. Here Brian is cutting a chunk of vinyl away so it will fit right beside the strap without causing any wrinkles. He will do this to both sides. The strap was riveted in place and looked difficult to remove, so we left it in place and decided to work around it instead of replacing it. Side the same way. Then continue stapling. That one didn't hit anybody in the eye, did it? Oh my. When we get to the outside curve here, we have way too much vinyl fabric to create small wrinkles while we staple. So we're going to create two large pleats or folds in the fabric so they are pleasing to the eye. The only way this could have been avoided was to create a separate panel that had been patterned from the seat and then to sew it in place prior to stapling the cover to the seat. 
Since this is the area of the seat that is hidden, it's on the side, we figured this would be acceptable for our customer. Now cut away the excess vinyl and check for any areas that need extra stapling. Then glue and staple the end on. or corner protectors back in place. Both the aft seat and now the forward seat are completed. But what about the little piece of vinyl covering the handlebar pad? That may look difficult, but it's not when you use Allsport from Sailrite. That's coming up next. Here's the old handlebar pad cover. It's in great shape except for the vinyl does not match the new seat vinyl that we're using. So we're going to remove the staples and the vinyl and replace it with the exact same vinyl we used on the seats. The process is the same as what was done to recover the seats. Stretch it over the cover until you're happy with its appearance and staple it in place. We have cut the vinyl piece rather large, which is always a good idea, but it's also as important to trim it to size as you secure it, which makes it easier to stretch and fit over the object. Cut away any excess that restricts the job of creating a nice tight fit. You do not want a large bulk of fabric stapled in place, but rather small pleats or tucks of fabric. Brian is working alone, so he will use the pony clamps yet again to hold the vinyl to the cover to position it. Looking good. Now cut away the excess yet again to keep the bulk out of the way and make it easier for a good fit. I got way more meat that I need. All sport from Sailrite is truly an amazing four-way stretch vinyl. You cannot accomplish this with any other type of vinyl fabric that we know of. Notice how Brian is distributing the wrinkles along the edge. He is keeping them small enough that they do not show up on the visible outside surface. Then when done, trim away the excess and your job is complete. Yeah. Nice. Even Brian likes it. Ah, it didn't go nearly as bad as I thought it would. And there's... Let's go over the materials lists and the tools that we use to install these covers to our personal watercraft. For all the covers on this personal watercraft, we used a little more than two yards of all sport four-way stretch vinyl from Sailrite. Our project is complete, and hopefully you too will be able to successfully recover your next seat using supplies from Sailrite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support.